Well, here's a major report coming out of TFI Global that states that Saudi Arabia is very close to um, recognizing Israel uh, and there are clear signs that prove it. And this is what the article says. It says Saudi Arabia has always wanted to normalize ties with Israel, at least in the last uh, 10 years, we'll say. It wanted to do so last year itself when President Donald Trump first brokered peace agreements between Israel and various Arab states. However, due to the multiplicity of factors, it could not. President Donald Trump is gone. But his Israel and Middle East policy is being moved forward by the Biden administration, even if secret and uh, compl- complemented with the usual Democrat warmongering. The same was uh, witnessed during the 11-day Israel-Hamas war, where Joe Biden went out of his way to, to support the Jewish nation. Now, this is what you want to be listening to right here. It says, as reported by uh, TFI, the uh, Biden administration is now looking to carry forward the Abraham Accord legacy of Donald Trump and is said to be in silent discussion with multiple Arab states to normalize ties with Israel. Saudi Arabia is one of these states with the only difference being that uh, Riyadh does not require any convincing by the United States. The Abraham Accords have had the approval of Saudi Arabia since the very beginning and it uh, is only a matter of time before the leader of the Arab world signs the historic accord. Saudi Arabia has been posturing very strategically in order to let the concerned parties know it is keen to normalize ties with Israel. In a historical step, the United Arab Emirates, which was the first Arab state to sign the Abraham Accords, opened its embassy in Israel on Wednesday. The UAE also became the first Gulf state to open an, uh, uh, an embassy in Israel as its envoy hailed the trade and investment opportunities that closer ties would bring at a flag-raising ceremony also attended by Israel's president. Now, of course, there are some setbacks in the uh, Middle East. Oman said they had decided not to uh, normalize relations with Israel, but if, in fact, Saudi Arabia does, that's going to change everything for Oman. And now talking to Jordan, uh, it uh, basically says, importantly, According to a report by the Middle East Monitor, Jordan will finalize the normalization of relations with Israel during an upcoming visit by Jordan King Abdullah II to Washington. The Biden administration seems to have convinced that uh, it would be in the best interest of Jordan to normalize ties with Israel. It is worthy to be mentioned here that Jordan uh, was the main reason why Saudi Arabia did not sign the Abraham Accord with Israel last year itself. A recent Washington Post report revealed how Trump's dream to unite American allies Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia under his deal of the century could never materialize because King, uh, Jordan's King Abdul II did not bend on the issue of making concessions on the sta- status of Jerusalem and other Palestinian uh, related issues. Now, this is how the article ended up. It says the indications are clear. The Abraham Accords are soon about to receive a big impetus as major Arab states, including Saudi Arabia, are about to normalize bilateral ties with Israel. And, you know, this could play big dividends for also Jordan, Anama, and a few others. And with what it seems to be Jordan on board, this could very well open up the gates to a similar three religious site religious center on the Temple Mount, what's already uh, basically going on in Dubai, where you have a Protestant uh, temple or or a church, a mosque, and of course also the temple for Jerusalem. And as we know, as you know, we, we can't make these things up. They have to be in the Bible. And the Bible says that at some point in time there would be a temple built on the Temple Mount. And you know, as much as we like to look at the conspiracy theories, the fact still remains, this is what the Bible says, that the tribulation period will start with a peace with many. So certainly this is what we should be watching for. And um, I will continue to keep you up to date on that and let you know what's going on. But I'd certainly be looking for a uh, normalization of ties and possibly a big signing of many Arab nations and maybe, uh, maybe some outside the Arab world where this big peace with many does form. You know what? The one thing about... This is the Bible says that, or I should say it alludes to the fact that when this um, peace process is confirmed, it makes it sound like that 
the peace process was started by somebody else or it was a it was a past peace process that it was voided at some point in time and left for dead but somebody's reviving it and making it and confirming it and making it stronger now in the end we probably won't see the full peace process come to uh, fruition because it's clear in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 that once the rapture takes place, then the uh, Antichrist will be revealed. And before I go on, uh, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe and also like this video and um, put a comment in the comment section. Again, those are the things that attract people to uh, these types of videos. And of course, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. If you've never asked the Lord to come into your life and save you, repented of your sins and uh, taken him on from this moment, then now would be a good time to do so. I, you know, I really believe that at some point soon there will be a rapture and then the tribulation period will begin. And you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be left behind. If I were you, I just had a gentleman who wrote me and said that he had bought a number, I believe it was somewhere around 7 to 10 of my tribulation period survival guides. He's going to go and give it to each one of his family members or at least to each family. I did the same thing when I first published this book. I gave a free book to each family and family member. So they have this book in their possession. Of course, many of them are Christians, but they will be leaving that book behind for somebody who's not. So I'd certainly recommend that you get this book. Leave it in your house or give it to your lost friend or loved one so that once the tribulation period does begin, they will know exactly what to do from that day forward. Of course, the first thing you need to do is accept the Lord as Savior. Don't think for a minute that you're going to be able to enter into heaven just because you don't take the mark of the Antichrist. That's one of the biggest misnomers in Bible prophecy. Everybody seems to think that, listen, if I can just avoid taking the mark of the Antichrist, then in the end, I'll be saved. Well, that's the farthest thing from the truth. The bottom line is it's right here. If you do not accept the Lord as Savior when the Antichrist comes on the scene, you're going to believe his big lie. The Great Deception, again, which is uh, described in 2 Thessalonians 2, somewhere around 8 to 12. So don't think for a minute that if you just don't take the mark, that you're going to find favor with God and he's going to allow you into his millennium. Without salvation, you will not be able to identify what the Antichrist is doing, and you will see what he's doing as being right and righteous. But I certainly hope that you will come to the Lord before you have to make that decision. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.